and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to EU League. It is, of course, stage three of our 2021 competitive year, and we start off with our first matchup of day three. It's BDS versus Heroic, an all-French game. Welcome back again. I'm Osamedic. With me are Jess and Fresh, my friends. How about we have a chat about these two teams, first of all, with Team BDS, a team that I guess everybody knows at this point. It's been too many years to count fresh. How about we see their chances for today? Yeah, I mean, Team BDS, everybody knows them. Everybody will think the Shaiko show. And for the most part, it is. But this team isn't just the Shaiko show anymore. Mm. They've picked up Bride. They are just a coherent unit of, honestly, I think Dez said it before, this team has the best talent in I possibly think holistically, yes. individual yep. talent. You put them all together, you had a really good analyst, you had a good manager, yeah. and they produce very, very good and consistent results. They are one of my favorite teams to watch in my bank segment for Know How. I obviously pointed out that their vault setup was my favorite, so not a surprise that they're innovating, they're above the rest of the pack. It's not my favorite though. Oh. I don't actually, I think it's too basic. It's too basic. But I always said a bad just, word. Well, I, mm. I wanted to yeah, say- I knew what you wanted to say, everyone knows what we want to say. I actually disagree. Not many people use Interchunker. They were the first team in EU sure. on Clubhouse, on Cafe, and now on, Cl on Bank to use the Shoemaker as a plant denier. Yeah. Sure, but imagine it's 2021. The coolest thing is somebody's running to chunk. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, you you're more. right. You're right. The double mirror does sort of add to the the flavor, and they've got a bit of spice. So we can we can agree to disagree here and there. But I will say that for BDS right now, it is just about holding on to that throne after what they did at the Mexico Major there is no doubt that they are a formidable team online and offline mm -hmm. something Empire can't even do they yep. are only an offline mm -hmm. team that is a very hard place to be able to hold on to for a long period of time what's the saying you know it's hard to hold on to but easy to get rise up or something like that there's a saying out there I'm I don't terrible know the thing that I keep repeating on stage all the time what? which is it's much more difficult to hold the crown yes. than to gain it yes there you go. that one yeah. See, this is Milos is I the ooze word wisdom. Word king. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave the crown. The, wor you. the, the word. King. The word. I have the best of words. As <laughs> they say. So many languages has so many words. It's great. I don't know where to put them though. <laughs> Jess. Uh, yeah. I've, I've been trying. My classes aren't going too well. Aww. Heroic though. Yes. On the other side, Jess. You've coached one of the players, but they have a change today. Shukri is mm. playing with them with Derza being yeah. benched. I would love to know the reasoning behind that. But uh, turning around this, and I know you and I can only speculate, we can only theory craft, we don't have an official statement for you. They may release one on their Twitter as to why, or Durza might just be, you know, otherwise occupied today. You know, things happen and the stand-ins occur. But if there is a stand-in to put in place of Durza, there is no one else other than the man himself, Shukri, because what he did in place of Thunder last playday was a heroic effort. Pun absolutely intended. He did his absolute best to try and elevate the team for a really big must win. I'm just glad to see Thunder back. He didn't have the best of starts. He got targeted by Secret. I he had know. a very bad game in playday one. He was what benched but he's back it's well, only he, taken him one, was, no, one week no they said they did say they, state they gave publicly him a break. Yeah. that he felt that he wasn't at his best yeah uh, the obviously the mental warfare of he's, going into he's your got that experience game. now though so he's had Absolutely. that experience let's come into it let's come into it fresh and let's give it a go let's come into it fresh, fresh. Again. Oh, yeah, how yeah, about we have go. a chat then about our map in this series again seven map pool six are down and one is left and we're going to go to oh, oregon bds banning out chalet yeah the card borgen for a uh, reason Borg, yeah. yada yada the whole you know the whole nine yards for it but mm. let's be completely honest mm -hmm. heroic are up against the wall here they have had some good times yeah. against the bds in the Absolutely. past but would they be able to repeat it here? What's your thoughts? This is their best map. Yeah. This is ah. their best hope, at least in my eyes. I'm not sure what you think. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree. I had this pegged as a as a clubhouse game. But the only reason I that I didn't think it would be a clubhouse game is BDS consistently beat Heroic on clubhouse. Mm -hmm. So to go to Oregon makes a lot of sense. They're fairly good at it. I know Des will probably mention it in the cast about them using the Amaru up the, uh, oh. the window into kids and dorms. Stop it. Yeah. Love it. But they've got some, they've got some funky strategies at times and if they've got any chance today, that's what they need to employ, in my eyes. Last time BDS played this was stage two against VP, not the strongest of opponents to go up against, and they barely won max OT 8-7. So the last recorded outside of French League, and how much do we mm. wait French League? Let's 
you know, yeah. but that was the last time. So that wasn't a very formidable win. And I'm not entirely sure BDS going to Heroic's best map in their map pool mm. was the wisest choice. But hey, maybe they're giving them, you know. BDS on Oregon, it's always been a map that they're just happy to go to. They'll play anybody on Oregon mm. because they know they've got a very good Oregon. Mm. They don't necessarily do much counter, I don't think. They just play their own game and they tend to win. Even if it is close at times, they know a way to win on the map. So... I don't think they really minded which map they go to. I know Chalet was down there at the end as well. Yep. They've clearly added that, that to their pool. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a very middle of the road map, but it's one that they are very good on as well. And BDS are known for having a very flexible map pool. Yeah. Probably deeper than any team has before. Even when we still had, was it Theme Park? They yeah. were they absolute won. trash at it. And then they <laughs> worked on it for yeah. two weeks and they got it down to a T. So very excited to see how this goes. Maybe this is the chance for Heroic to pull out the W. Fresh Chess, thank you very much. Let's toss it then to our casters again. A French Derby, but who comes out on top? Oh, we're going to have two narrators for it. It's Ace and Dice Takes Third, boys. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much Milos. Hey, welcome to game one of the day. BDS versus Heroic, a French derby here in France. Who could have thought it? It's going to be a good game, I'm sure. And we looked at that map ban at first and thought, Oregon, not too sure about that one. But you look back at the history for BDS, and although, sure, there are a good number of wins in there, I think about the 70% win rate they're rocking on this map, it hasn't been the worst for Heroic either. 44%, which when you hear it, you may shake a little bit in your boots, but remember, it's Heroic who haven't necessarily had the best win rate on any map, period. Looking forward to this one, though, Ace, because you think this one could find us going to at least 12. I've absolutely no reason for saying that whatsoever, Des, other than a gut feeling that comes sometimes after watching several thousand hours of competitive siege. I, I've just got a feeling mm -hmm. about this one. I just come into it and I just think, you know what? I think there might be a little bit more than meets the eye. I mean, we've got to look back at the history. We've had this matchup twice now over EUL. Obviously, there's, you know, the meetings and things like the French leagues, but let's just look at our tier one competition in EUL. Stage one, stage two, BDS, seven, one. Stage two, BDS, 7-2. It's not been a pretty one for Heroic so far. They are yet to put up a good performance. We're just going to finish out the uh, the operator bands here and we're going to just join back with us. I think we've just got a, a little uh, a little issue to iron out for one of the players, which we will get done as soon as possible. Mm. We've got Thatcher, Flores, Kaid. Nothing drastically unusual there, apart from it being BDS on the Flores ban. I know it's an operator they really like. You've stolen the words oh. from my mouth, Ace. Alem said it is the best operator in the game right now that you can pick, Valkyrie. It's even worth talking about. Every game there's a Valkyrie van to be spoken about, it feels like, but the Flores is the spicy one. Alem's really liking the operator. BDS bringing it a good number of times. Last week, we did see them also employing the Finker, which makes me think maybe we're going to see more of that coming out in this game. And they're saying, look, we don't want to play the Flores. We'd rather take it away because we respect it. We know how strong a pick it can be. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it is, uh, it is extremely powerful. Of course, those Rotero drones going in and with four of them, you can clear an awful lot of utility. You know, a well-positioned Rotero could be taking out two ADSs, a barbed wire, a shield. It, you know, it can do all that at the same time, Des. It's not just one drone per utility item. Or, you know, it, there's no limit to it, really, depending on how that defensive setup looks. So... We'll see as we progress into the game just how much of an impact it has. We're going to be heading into round one of Oregon now then. An interesting little stat for you, Des, and I know you love these ones. So far in stage one, stage two, BDS have started on the attack both times. I wondered whether Heroic might try to manipulate the banning and the picking to get themselves onto the attack this time because it has not gone well for them, Des. As I said, 7-1-7-2. But out of those 12 attacking rounds, BDS have managed to get the diffuser down and active seven times. So only five rounds have Heroic been able to stop them putting the diffuser down in two games so far. We will see if that continues here on Oregon. It's something for you to watch out for at home. How exactly do Heroic manage to control the site and how do they manage to hold that BDS attack at bay because so far over two matchups they've not had a solution.
I saw the lineup at first, and honestly, for a, a second, forgetting who was starting on what side, I was like, oh, the BDS are running on the uh, the Clash here, Ace. And I thought, hang on a minute, that's Heroic running it as well. BDS are the kind of team that would employ a Clash, and we've seen them do it before, playing on Oregon down in the basement. They're using it to contest very aggressively up against the blue door. Here it's being used up the stairs. And in fact, we saw this being used last week by a team, if I recall rightly. A couple of players holding up on Big Tower, one of them being a Clash. The other looking to contest onto what would be drones or players trying trying to work their way down Big Tower. Similar sort of setup. And as always at BDS, you'll see Shaiko being the solo player when he's on the Yana. Very commonly a guy that you'll see on this map, especially pushing down through Laundry or pushing down through Freezer, chucking grenades. And remember the first time we saw him playing Yana, his first round, he got two nade kills. And we were like, oh, he learned that you can throw grenades. You haven't got to shoot people to kill the mace. And he can work absolute wonders on this operator. We've got to keep a close eye though on Shukri and where those Jaegers um, ADSs have been placed. That'll be the big deterrent for Shaiko in this round. Shaco just put in a gone six shot in there. I'm presuming to clear some utility on or around the rotate, but actually manages to catch 50 damage onto Blaz as well. So a little added bonus for him there as Shaco, as he always does, just seems to have the, the look of the draw. He always seems to have those little moments on side with him. Now, out comes the clearance for Freezer, looking to get themselves established, but haven't done so yet. Chaos is going to be trying to hold off for you, just holding down rear stage. And Heroic still looking pretty good, but there's plenty of time for BDS here. And the real telling moment is when those kills start to drop in. Now, some of that Zofia utility is just going to be used to try and force the Clash of Voy back. But You've got to be careful with that because there's only going to be a limited opportunity, Des, for them to use that shield break mechanic and to move it away. And if they waste it while there's on the stairs and there's nobody there to make a challenge, then they're not going to have any option to get rid of that shield. It's going to become more and more difficult. I find it really interesting looking at it as well, noting that there are three hard breaches coming out for the side of BDS. Not really something you see all that often on a map like Oregon, normally reserved for something like a clubhouse. But here, they definitely want to make sure these hatches are being opened up. And Thunder making a thunderous return to EUL after his breakout last week with the opening kill for this match coming in onto Ranchero. LM's just holding down the bunker angle for the time being, but there is a man still in the Shaco spot. And the very fact that we call it that Des should give everybody <laughs> at home a little idea as to just how good BDS can be on this map, but not right now. Shaco, thank you very much. There's Keoxis as he manages to find the headshot onto the Yana pushing into Freezer. And with 14 seconds left to go, Heroic are looking pretty good here. Rafal looks to make that challenge onto the Clash, but without the necessary utility left, as no. I suggested in the early round, it's becoming more difficult <laughs> and he can't managed to find the kill. 1v4, it's meaningless as Thunder comes in with a rapturous start to round one. And that is going to be heroic taking things to start us off on Oregon. That was a pretty impressive round coming out of Heroic as well, holding BDS at bay for the longest time. And I was talking to you yesterday, I was saying, looking back at the rounds that BDS have lost so far this stage, there's a very freaky, sudden, flawless round coming out for Vitality. There's one that they just lost to, in fact, a few they lost down to time. And that, to me, was one of those, again, where BDS just kind of stalled out. They were down inside of Freezer very quickly. You had a Lems inside of Blue, for example. And everyone just stopped for a solid minute to 90 seconds or so in the round and they ran out of drones. They were doing what Empire kind of recognizing themselves was a mistake. They were over droning. There was too much going on in terms of reliance for information to act on. And that came back to sting them a little bit in that round. Do want to see BDS up the ante here. Otherwise, Heroic will just find running that clock down is far easier than it normally is against BDS. And if you remember back to, to what I said before we got into the start of round one, one big problem that Heroic has had so far in EUL whilst defending against BDS has been preventing them getting that diffuser down. And what I like to see there is there was absolutely zero opportunity for BDS to put that on the ground. It wasn't even that Heroic were able to deny it. It wasn't a retake. It was just a point-blank refusal to let them get into a position to do so. And that was nice from Heroic. They need to double down on that and they need to keep going. Really, the target here for them has got to be improvement if nothing else but you know you've got to look at this and think this heroic team it's it's looking dicey for them in terms of their EUL lifeline. They've got a, a lot of work to do here and they've burnt a couple of games, played A1 and 2, where they were matches you'd look at and think they might be able to get a result here. You don't expect them to come and take, take, take points from a team like BDS, but you've got to remember, Des, this team now is a cornered animal. It's a beast just, just really having to fight for its life now, and that is what Heroic are going to do. They're going to come out swinging every single game. You can guarantee it, and... 
BDS, they might just be the unfortunate beneficiaries of that. Imagine. I mean, last week was the week to do it, but they couldn't quite pull it out of the bag. And just to give you guys... There you I go. Mean, there you a, go. That's lazy. I don't know. Blaz has been sat there and split the entire time, and I guess they weren't aware he was there. You'd think there'd be a bit of drone work coming in, but apparently not. And to lose Shaiko at the very start of a round, not the best start. I was going to touch on the, I like the specifics of a Heroic. It's worth noting. They need eight points to be safe. They've got 21 potentially available to them. So with how things currently set up, you're looking at it and saying, well, it's a very, very hard ass when others are going to start fighting their way back through as well. There has been a rehost call in here, so I imagine it will come through soon-ish. With that opening kill coming through for Heroic, a good start to the round overall. Yep, that's it. We will play the round out, obviously, as there has been a kill. So once this one wraps up, we will get everybody back in. Rafael could be a bigger loss than you might think, Des. You know, we talk about his stats quite often. Kirk is just managing to make sure that Renshiro's a loss there as well as he moves in. And I tell you what, Heroic are not losing gunfights here. That much is for sure. But I touch on Rafael there. He's had a little bit of a quiet stage three. But overall, statistically speaking, for BDS on the year 2021, he's had a very good year. He's had a very good season as Rafael. And this is one fixture in particular that I like to pick up on for him. In two matches so far, there's stage one and two. Rafal is 20 and five in this very matchup. So I'm sure BDS, they're going to be looking for a big performance from him today. At this point, his wife in Fabri Day just wasting a bit of time here until we can get that rehost underway. Rafal can rejoin the game. Once he's back in, we'll get to resume things. But I do want to touch on the use of shields in this round. You're already seeing the Goyo come into light. You know, two or three of the gunfights we've seen take place have been from behind shields by Heroic. And even with BDS feeling confident, having eyes trained on the shields, still end up losing the fight as the peak comes through. And Bride almost losing his life once again. He's facing off against two or three here, holding in from the same spot. So we'll call it how it is, Ace. It's going to be 2-0 coming through to Heroic. A really good start against a team that, you know, we were nervous about. We thought for BDS this could be a very fast game. If it carries on at this kind of pace, it's going to be anything but quick. Do you think Breeday was doing that thing, you know, where somebody drops from the game and they load him back in? So you say, just give us as much time as you can. We need to get it before the next round. It wasn't quite AFK on the roof, but it was uh, just chill out inside a trophy. A joke, a of while. course. Don't worry. We will pause the game for a foul. We, will, we have that luxury. We will let him back in. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, again, it's a good start. Second round, you can... I don't want to call it a write-off because many will look at that round and say, oh, well, there was a rehost coming through. That was it pretty much done. You're pointing at Thunder smiling. It's happy. Had a... Toughest week, come back into the team. Not sure exactly what we were going to be coming into. You know, we've had a, it's the third play day, it's the third different roster lineup for Heroic here, and that can have a big impact. But I tell you what, today they seem to have found the groove a little bit. They've got them first two rounds. The thing is, look at it this way they're now going to go to the third choice site. BDS may well take this next round. That's not the end of the world because if Heroic can cycle back through those two sites again and take a 4 2 half, all of a sudden, what I said at the beginning of the game, which I'll even forgive you for it, they might have been a chuckle or two. As I said, it's saying that this one may well go all the way to 12. If we get to a 4 2 half you start looking at that and thinking i tell you what we're going to have at least 11 rounds if we don't have 12 or more so heroic going very very well so far and what i like to see is that that's having a quick impact on the camp it's not just thunder there were smiles from others they've settled down a little bit now I, you know I'm, I'm aware of that they're having a chat now i'm not going to say they're all smiles because they're not right now but they were when they came out of that it was just a nice response and it was nice to see that obviously it's not taking its toll too much they they being very resilient mentally to this. I remember speaking to someone yesterday. I want to say it was fresh, but I may have been wrong. Not as heroic, but recall back to when they were known as Tempera, prior to Train Hard, of course, and the many other iterations these poor guys have been through over the last 18 months. Back towards the end of stage two, um, at the end of 2020, everyone was like, man, these guys are heading down. They're, they're done for, they're going to get relegated. Like Chaos at that point weren't looking to be the auto-relegation team. And play days six to nine... They won every single game. They got 15 points back to back after being arguably one of the worst teams throughout the whole year. Sure, they had a couple of spicy plays and cool maps here and there, bringing out new statues and things like the Amaru. And it was just a, where on earth did that come from? And it's the one thing I'm always fearful of with Heroic is painting them in a corner and saying, these guys are done. They're out, they're going home, that's it. Especially, I mean, yeah, sure, the team kind of fragmented and split apart, but the core essence, I think, is still here. And that's what makes me a little bit nervous. Looking towards Chaoxus and Void for that sort of thing. Blaz, even more scary, arguably, than what we saw from the team last year. Durza, who isn't playing today. Of course, making way for Thunder and Shukri to step in. Who, uh, although it's only been two rounds, aren't exactly falling short so far. 
and I don't hate it either, not at all to layer any heavy criticism on Durza. He's that player who two or three rounds in a map will drop a 2k or a 3k and basically win you the round. But I think when it comes to consistency, maybe that's what they're looking for, and that's why they're spicing up a few ideas here. Whilst they've got Shukri on loan from Death Row, while there's a couple of other changes going on, why not experiment? It feels like the time to do it. Your backs are against the wall. Doing what you've always done isn't going to work. Let's throw the kitchen sink at them and try something different. The thing is, as you say there, there's, you know, yes, there is a lot of work for Heroic to do. Are they done? Absolutely not. You know, we see it time and time again in, in Siege specifically, in esports as a, a wider consideration, in traditional sports. Teams are not done until the maths say they are done. You know, we've seen it so many times with teams come back. Look at Team 1 at the Mexico Major. We don't even have to look that far back, Des. You know, they're in a situation where you know only 7-2 or better will do for them and they manage to achieve it get the rematch come back in and win the whole thing hey, that might have been the, the most it's, insane it's game. wild it's just absolutely <laughs> wild and these things happen and you know you and i had a bit of a joke about it at the time but i said at the time you know <laughs> somebody said oh it's almost impossible and i said it might just be more possible than you think and that is because these things just seem to happen you know when it's there when the right on the wall it is possible as you say heroic just to give everybody the sort of stakes and how things work out at the minute are eight points away from safety obviously that is a bit of a moving target at the minute because it depends on what team secret and rogue do but if for argument's sake we said team secret and rogue don't get any more points for the rest of the stage which i'm sure probably won't be the case but if they didn't get any more points then heroic would need eight to find themselves in safety obviously as secret and rogue get more points they might need to find a few more but i tell you what three against b Yes, what a start that'd be. There's one thing I think everyone is looking at here and getting excited about. Do you recall a certain Mr. Giddens 3K for a C4 onto the south window here, Ace? I mean, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited when thinking about that. When are you not excited? That's the big question we all want to know the answer to. As you get into bed and you're like, oh, sleep. Sleep I love time. It. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I have a nightmare getting to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine just smiling into the darkness. You nightmare. Either way, there was a magical 3K C4 coming out from Leon last stage where it basically won the, it, did, it did win the round for his team. Like Hands down about it. No other way you can look at it. The big fear you've got to worry about is if they ignore Small Tower altogether and just put all of their focus here onto the east side. And that appears to be the focus of most of B. Yes, they want the top floor control to get in kids. That way they have the vertical control of kitchen and can drop in and go for the plant. So no focus coming into dining. Everything is going inside a kitchen. Shukri's going to come under a lot of pressure very, very quickly here. Rafal does take some damage. BDS, they need to be, as you say, very cautious of the potential for a vertical nitro coming up through that floor. We've seen that used before, just into that space in Attic. I think that was possibly... That was, no, that was the breach coming in. We're going to have Shukri now just still trying to hold on to that angle for as long as possible. Only halfway into the round, there is more time to be burnt before they can drop away from the top floor. But Voy, who was supporting from the top of white, has moved away. This is all coming down to Shukri now. Breede managed to find one as an opener onto Thunder. And there you go, LM's manages to make that pressure pay. Takes Shukri down with a headshot. Five versus three now, and not looking good for Heroic here on their tertiary site. Yeah, I mean, to bleed those two members out like this relatively early on. I know it's still a one-minute mark. We've got 60 seconds left, but to do it with about 80 seconds of the round still to play, to get rid of two, remove the C4 power coming out of the mute, going to sting you a little bit because he was helping hold from downstairs what was going on up, and they won that reverse angle trade. Now in the five versus three, BDS do have to get a move on. We've commented on their speed at points. Blaz is down to a slither of HP and being contested from multiple sides, but they should know about this. I don't think they were aware, actually, that he was inside of Big Tower when the spray came down. Gets the one back onto a foul, four versus three and 35 seconds to play ace. I don't think they'll t worry too much about it. Breed is going to hold him oh. up here now as Blaz gets forced away. Ranchiro finds Voy and it is starting to fall apart, but Heroic somehow just keep clinging on. There's Chaoxis manages to find one with a headshot onto Shaiko. Shut down on the vertical though. It's going to be Blaz this time losing what little life he had left as Ranchiro makes him pay. One versus three, but only 15 seconds left to go. The question is, can Chaoxis survive? Unlikely as Breed starts to get that diffuser down and this is going to be a retake for the Goyo. Oh. Fine shots onto the Zafir of Renshiro, but just cannot find the bite that he needs and get the kill. So that leaves him one versus three. 30 seconds left to do something about this. Going to open up a rotation, but it's only a little decoy. He manages to find oh. one, but shut down from the hatch as he tries to take on that vertical fight. Renshiro doing everything that BDS needs, and that gets them on the board to start things for their day at least. And it's 2-1 now, Hitohiro. 
That was a very clinical BDS round, I think. It's a good round. Work as a team, take control of a certain area of the map, use it to stage a plant. And they are probably undisputedly the best planting team that we have in EU. Shepard, I'm sure, from Empire, probably contesting Brede for a number of plants very closely. But when you look at it, they are a team that consistently, time after time, focuses on the objective. They're not the kind of team to say, right, let's go and try and kill everyone. That's not BDS's style. If they kill them by proxy of getting to the objective, different conversation altogether. But that was a big round for them because it gets them on the board for the first time. The rehearse is out the way. Any technical issues they had are now in the past and they can focus on starting to rack up some rounds on the attack. Two or three rounds is enough. They'll be looking for four. And that's one of the reasons that BDS is so successful as a team. As you say, they've almost got that reverse focus. It's like absolute objective first, but when that doesn't pan out, they have that ability still to say, right, let's just go and kill everybody. Yeah. And this is what we see from BDS time after time. That time wasn't necessary. Managed to work on plan A, get Diffuser down, and as I said, Heroic have struggled to stop them doing that before. But if they can stop them in laundry, and if they can stop them on that top floor of kids dorms it is going to be a really big start for heroic and i'm kind of hopeful that they get themselves another round or two on defense here because that is going to be game on now then we've got the tachanka coming along it's going to be void to pick him up keep an eye on what happens with that shumika launcher and just exactly where that fire goes down but again it's looking towards that plant focus of bds you gotta consider the fact that they've really enjoyed running shield so far as well in this first defensive half they They've always had something like the Frost on side to bring the extra. They've had the mobile version in the Clash back in round one. And here, of course, you now have that available on the Chanka 2 as of the latest patch. So you get that on the Smoke, you get it on the Chanka, you get it on the Goyo. They have C4s galore. They've got Smokes. They've got the Fire, the, the Schumacher launchers. They've got so much to waste time or just basically avoid having gunfights against BDS. And given how the first two rounds went, time being the big factor that works against BDS, I don't blame Heroic here. Stick to what has worked in the first couple of rounds for you and hope you can get the same results once again here in round four. Absolutely. Chaos is looking to get aggressive on to those stairs there. Nitro in hand, but he's just going to dip away and keep his utility for another day as it stands. He will see if there is a better opportunity later in the round. Now then, BDS are doing some quick work here. It's just over a minute gone. They're getting hatches open. Security hatch is going to be opened as well. I think we just hear that go. So that's going to be freezer access and laundry access sorted. Shukri's going to dip himself back deeper into sight behind that deployable shield and just look to hold a longer angle. But a lot of rotation going on. I'm not sure that Heroic know exactly... Oh, ho, ho. I'm not sure that they know exactly where this push is coming from, and I don't think they know just how close they came to losing the opening man to Elems there. Voy was just... Huh. He nearly fully reinforced and countered it at the last second, then vaulted back over. Great nade coming out of Shaiko. We said earlier on that he'll push in Freeze, he'll push in Laundry by himself and getting kills like that. Really, you'd be arguing that they should expect this on the side of Heroic. A second one comes through. Beautiful start from Shaiko once again. Exactly what BDS needed after the last attempt onto this site was getting Shaiko down there and just opening up that freezer. Out goes a second nade. Not going to be successful this time, but just looking to make sure his way is clear of any utility or anything else that might impede his progress. Thunder, he manages to get that kill, though. Headshot onto Shaiko, and that is going to just shut down the freezer for the time being. Rafal moving towards Laundry. This is becoming a real multi-dimensional push, Des. As it has been for them in both of these attacking rounds so far. Rafal, the one now working. Oh, the hatch. I thought he was coming down the main stairs, but no finds Thunder sleeping at the bottom side of Laundry. Now in the four versus two, Voight and Shukri have got to make it all happen. They've got no smoke. He steps out for the swing. Not the best choice to make when there are three BDS members there. Rafal with another one from the south side. That's basically two kills from around the hatch area. And again, this multi-sided push that, dare I say, Ace first originated in Latam. Two or three members up towards the north. One or two pushing down to the south side, it works wonders because teams just aren't sure how to react. It's honestly, it's the way that I like to see that side attacked because like you say, it is just so difficult to be able to to deal with because you you can see it inside a site and we saw it there. You've just got defenders spinning on the heels. They don't know which side they're going to be pushed from or where the aggression is going to come from. And that's why you get freebies like we saw for Rafal from that laundry hatch because players just lose focus. So not lose focus, but their focus is pulled elsewhere. And so, yep, you get a freebie shot into the back. Not a problem whatsoever. And BDS works that very, very well. And I'm interested to see Rafal get running there. As I said, this has been... A 
a very good matchup for him previously. He's played very well against Heroic in stage one and two. Gets himself a couple of kills, and that might just start the ball rolling for him. Heroic, they choose to move on. They're not going to double down in laundry and the downstairs in supply. They're going to try to move up to Kids Storms now and do something a little different for round five. They are operating while well, rolling around rolls quite a bit. They've now had three different players playing on the on the Jaeger. It was Shukri for the first couple of rounds, Blaz for the last couple, and now it's Kaox who's stepping up onto that mantle to try and go a little bit balmy, I'd imagine. Here, at least with two uh, bulletproofs coming in, two shields once again, so a big reliance on shields. I've got to say, there's no gun quite it's as a pretty satisfying. quick job at that, doesn't it? It's so satisfying because now, also at closer ranges, it opens a bigger hole than it used to, so you can do it much quicker. When I think it's your within, I want to say five meters of where it is you're trying to hit. I think beyond that, the, the holes get a little bit smaller and you can be more precise, but. Close range, it's just beautiful. I can imagine you getting contractors in, you know, and saying, oh, I'm getting a few estimates, I need to get this wall down in between these two rooms, and you've got guys coming in rubbing the chin, going, big job that, mate. And then you've got to Chanka comes in and goes, yeah, I'll have that done in 30 seconds to you. <laughs> it's fine, is that? Got the sledgehammer or the LMG? I'll have that done in Different prices. I'll have that done in 30 seconds for you. Super cheap job, no problem. Similar whatsoever. result. <laughs> All right, then, again, you're going to see now Shoko at least working out with the team more towards this one. So a bit of a split between the two sides where you've got two pushing up from Attic and three coming out from the southeast side. Bree Day's home on this map is walking, by the way. When he's on defense on smoke, you'll sometimes see him playing on the wall. When he's on attack on the thermite, he'll be the one opening it up. And here you've got two hard breaches being the focus on getting Attic open. Maybe in case one gets shot through one of those Maverick holes, there's always going to be an insurance choice to make sure it definitely gets opened. Thunder just being drawn out there. They'll know that he is going to be present. Shaiko using the Gon 6 just to clear out one of those deployable shields. We see the Shimika launcher coming over the top of the reinforcement from Attic there. Just to, It just shows you the sort of pinball that we see. Oh, no, it was through the rotate and through the door. The pinball that we see with those little Shimika grenades there to try and get the fire in the right place. No, no, it is over the top of the rotate. The, uh, the top-down view doesn't quite show us um, that it is open above that wall, and he's just bouncing it off and into Trophy to prevent that. That push coming, ah, yeah, there you go, much better view. Um, so I love that from the Tachankas players that we've got now, the way that they're figuring out these angles and maps just to try and get those Shumikas into the right place, just absolutely plaguing Shaiko with this at the minute. Oh, Thunder is being spammed by grenades, and he still swings and finds the kill. Does finally die to the trade coming out from beyond the grave, but that's still a wonderful kill to be pressured by three players and deliver the kill and dance around grenades the whole time. Great play by Thunder. Shaiko still trying to get an angle from Trophy. He's not been able to do anything from that doorway yet. And it's four versus four with 45 seconds left to go. But finally, Shaiko does manage to find something. And he finds himself a headshot onto Shukri. Now, Shumiko Launcher in action once again. And there you go. That's a big LMG headshot. Oh. But no, he switches out at the wrong moment. Just as Shaiko looks too aggressive. Oh. It's effectively one versus two. But I think Rafal will be picked. And he won't be picked up as Ranchiro manages to find that kill before that can even happen. And that's going to be BDS. They're starting to look formidable here, Des. That was a horrific shot from Shaiko into the back of kids as well. I was just like, no, you can't be doing it like that. He's seen you for a solid half a second. You still won. Another good round out of BDS. And that is one of those rounds that... I think does show for BDS when when it really comes from push to shove, even when the rounds are getting a little bit mental, you've got the individual gun skill on these players that they can step up and do magic. And I think it's something I said back at Mexico. I said, for my money, this team has the greatest sum of gun skill of any team in the world. There's some that will contest that for some Latin teams, I'd imagine, maybe even NA teams, you're feeling a bit spicy. But every single player on this team, on their day, can go absolutely huge. And Rafael's a player that many look at and go, well, He's quieter on this team. Like Bree Day, we've seen in clutch. Shaiko, we've seen what he can do. We've seen Alem's drop 15 plus, and ranchiro has been MVP for two or three of their last stages or tournaments over the last 18 months. Rafael, when it comes down to it, can go massive as well. All five players are just phenomenal. Absolutely. I mean, the only team that springs to mind that I would I would put there, I mean, there's always a challenger. There always, always. has to be. Um, the team that I, I would put up as a challenge there would be Faze um, in LATAM. you got Bullet, you got Cyber, you got Astro, you got like, some serious gunners on that team. Everybody, as you say, being very capable on the day. But that is, realistically, that, that is the one team that really jumps out to me in terms of what you're saying there and that sort of cumulative gun skill you know mm. literally anybody on the team able to get in there and just get a three or four piece you know very very quickly but um that's not to say that other teams don't have those sorts of capabilities you know we've got a lot of good teams we're absolutely spoiled for choice across the world of siege but 
Today, BDS, they are showing us what it's all about here, especially in the last three rounds. So Roy came out, managing to just catch them with a bit of a sucker punch, I think. And they had BDS smart in, had them on the ropes. So we've got to remember round two did have that drop for Raphael. So it was a bit of a five versus four. They'd already lost Shaiko at that point, but it certainly didn't help matters. But you just feel like Heroic could really do with this last round just to give them a bit of strength, a bit of positivity coming into the, f the second half. They're going back to where it all started in round one as well. This is the exact same lineup as what we saw back I'm in round one. I'm glad to see one. the clash back. Yeah, I think it was it was effective, right? Because it fed yep. them information of what was going on inside of meeting. They weren't playing it like inside construction. No, it was being used on Big Tower and not ready to fish for kills, but to fish for information. They saw when there was someone on E-Box Hatch. They, of course, had Big Tower stairs itself covered. So really, two birds, one stone was the outcome they were looking for. And they got it with the clash. A really valuable, I thought, for them, at least earlier on. The big question for me now is whether or not heroic learn they know that Rafal and Shaiko push south they know the refs rest come up to the north what can they do to adapt and deal with that or will BDS just bowl them over again well this is it they lost two men to Shaiko in Frieza last time around I've just had a quick look when we were on Chaoxis's point of view. I'm not certain that there are any ADSs inside a freezer, and that was exactly how he was dealt with last time around. Thank you very much. We've got one mute jammer down there, but no, I don't see any ADSs in place. Chaoxis was dealt with very easily, without any risk to Shaiko, really, with the nade last time around. So something, you know, I'm, I know that utility is needed elsewhere, but here we go. Out come the nades oh, once oh, again. Oh, Chaoxis oh. taking big damage. It's almost as if we saw it coming, Des. The one thing is he did back away from Freezer thinking he'd be safe on highway, but the answer is absolutely not. Shaiko's still finding him. Now knows exactly where he is on highway, and rightly so, moves away. Gets a little bit closer. C4 over the top. Shaiko sees it, same as he did back in round one, and it's just like a fly on the wall. It doesn't bother him in the slightest. He just completely up. ignores it. Just steps back, a little bit of target practice, see if I can shoot it before detonated, but it was never really going to do any damage. Alems has managed to get himself all the way back down the laundry stairs here, but no, he will be found and shut down. He does managed to get the trade onto Blas though as bullets pass in the air and find their targets on each other but Breedy now needs to go and collect the diffuser that's been left down there. Shaco shut down that is very important kill from Chaoxis. Manages to get the kill there. Four versus three and Des we've still got a clash on side and when you've got a man advantage with ten seconds left to go that is big news. Heroic right now they're just going to hold the positions as Rafal and Breedy try to push in here and it is going to be futile as Shukri finds Breedy. Time ticks down and runs through their fingertips. That's going to be the round to Heroic, and that is not a bad start for them. 3-3 three, three on the half, Des, and they have already improved on any result that they've had against BDS inside of EUL 2021. Massively. I mean, this is the thing, right? We look at the half and say, oh, you know, good half for Heroic. If any other team had got, like, on 3-3 three and three with BDS on the attack on Oregon, you'd be saying, oh, they'd be wanting more from that. And that is the scary part about it. That was a, dare I say, a poor half from BDS. A few rounds that they didn't really have a chance to fight in, yet they've still walked away with three attacking rounds. And now they get to step across to playing on the defensive side. This is where I get a little bit nervous for Heroic, because overcoming BDS on defence on a map like this is no easy feat. Attacking against BDS hasn't gone well for Heroic historically. For anyone, really. Well, that is a very <laughs> fair point, um, but certainly for Heroic from what we've seen so far this year. So there is certainly going to be some work needed from them, but never say never. It is always possible. We're going to have that uh, bottom floor site set up once again. We've got Shaiko on the Aruni. I would imagine we will see him playing in his... Uh, named spot. I won't even say favoured spot. I will say named spot. Well, there you go. Just on top maybe. of the blue top. Maybe, maybe not. Because we'll normally what you'd have is Rafael playing on the Wamai and you have Shaiko playing on Jaeger, the yes. one standing at door. But because of the slight changes in setups here, It'd be interesting to see. It'd be interesting to see whether he's What I do there. like is their kind of alternative. Rather than bringing the Wamai for the magnets, you do have the Aruni on side, who can be used for much the same purpose, right? To block out doorways. You don't want nades being chucked through for free. I'm not sure where he's placing them yet. I imagine most are favoured out towards blue, because that's where you really want to be contesting. One on the doorway near him wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. The others, I guess we'll see as the round progresses. As expected, Shaiko is indeed going to be in Shaiko's spot. He's got his deployable shield, he's got his ADS, and he is going to be in charge of holding down bunker angles that he knows where very, Where are the laser gates? I can't well, see him. I've not seen any laser gates so far. There we go. We've got one on ah, to just going into electrical. And still um, two more to find. Still two more. 
Oh, I used to, I used to play Maybe this on game hatches. With, I used to play There's this one game on laundry door, and uh, there could well be one on the electrical hatch. It wouldn't spread. Yes, you can see the little gadget there sticking out. You can't see it here, but underneath you can see it floating in midair. So, there we go. Remember we used to play that game with Alex, Find the Castles? <laughs> yeah, I do remember. And Yukin back in the day. Oh, throwback. And now here we are playing Medic Tour Easy. I'm not actually sure who's observing this game. We normally find out early on. We haven't found out. We haven't. Somebody does one, two, and five, and the other does three and four. And all. Yeah, production will have to flash the name up so we all know. They deserve the credit. They certainly do, because they, they do, do a fantastic job. But so far, Heroic have done a reasonable job. I won't necessarily say a fantastic one, but they are keeping themselves competitive and in the fight. The big question now is how can they do on the attack? This is the first attacking opportunity that they've had. Shukri is going to be pushing that rear stage stairs angle. He's not going to get a view onto the man at pillars just yet, but it is going to be a big part of this attack. We open up electrical hatch, but the laser gates will just burn a bit of utility, if nothing else, before they can start dumping nades down there. The reason that you open that electrical hatch is to make the player at Pillar's life difficult. You want to move Renshiro out of that spot, and once that hatch is open, nades can rain down there, make it very difficult for him to stay in that position. So that's what you're looking to do, to just try and give a little bit more freedom for the players coming in from bunker, and to get the men established down rear stage stairs. I think rightly so, Shaka here back in the way expecting a nade to come singing in towards that shield anytime soon. The thing is, lots of drones rolling around inside of Construct One, inside of Blue, so I'm like, oh, you've got to be a bit faster than this now. We're down to the final 45 seconds, and they've just about got hatches open. They're still looking to remove shields. This is going to be a bit of a mad rush, I think, in the dying seconds, Ace. And the nade missed on the shield first time around. There is a second there that will take it out. Switch drawn, drop down electrical. That's going to be a big kill, though, from Chaos. He's clearing Shaiko out of Shaiko's spot. Gives us five versus four. 30 seconds left to go, but Ranchiro is still in place. We see the nade indicator, and that might just force him to move. Voy manages to to get aggressive and get himself onto elbow here. I think they are aware, but in oh, come the whoa. kills. It's a big triple from Thunder, and that is Thunder lightning the whole nine yards from the man as he comes in with a fourth on the pistol. Anybody who had questions after player day one just got some answers. Flawless round off the back of it. Man, I remember that coming out of, I want to say it was TSM at SI. Four players forcing their way in from blue, only for Bolo to come pushing down big tower stairs and kill three members of BDS that were holding inside of Highway. That was a similar setup. So much focus inside of blue. One man comes bursting his way down the big tower stairs and kills three people and ends the round for BDS. They'll remember that one. Back to SI, I guarantee it. Wicked round from Heroic and a great start to their attack in half. Great, great start to their attacking half, and you just love to see it. Let's have this one competitive. Let's make a game of it. And that's what Heroic just signaled that they were going to do, BDS. They're going to head straight back down there, Des, but I don't know. That attack was reasonably convincing coming out of Heroic. We will see at the end of this one whether it's a good decision or not. The thing is, they didn't have too much difficulty in dealing with the individual elements of this defence. Shaiko spot. Cleared the shield, got the kill onto Shaiko, gone. Nade down from electrical to clear Renshiro out. Thunder picks the kill up, moves through and just kills everybody else. Voy was able to assault onto Elbow and move the Tachanka out of there. It was just very well worked from Heroic. They identified the key components of the defence and they just took them apart one by one. Quite scary, isn't it, really? Chuck Thunder on something a bit more aggressive, like the Twitch, and the way he will sing. Worth mentioning as well, he's not just on six kills. There are a couple more because we had a rehost after those first couple of rounds. So you can expect that total to be tallying up a little bit more, given he did find the first kill in the entire match. You said, Ace, that you thought this might go through to 12, and it is slowly starting to heat up that way, because Heroic, beyond the halfway mark, being ahead of BDS is a line I would never think I'd say today. Especially, as I say, you know, I came in with those two results on the tip of my tongue because I knew we'd need them. 7-1, seven, 7-2. Seven, that is what we have seen out of this game historically in EUL. BDS have been extremely dominant against this roster, but Heroic, they are knuckling down. And this is what I said. They're coming out here swinging because they know that they need the points. There is no time for a breather for them anymore. They can't allow anybody to scare them, whether it be BDS or anybody else. They need to find at least three wins through the rest of this stage. And every one that they do is another tick in a box towards potential survival. Imagine if it's one against BDS as well. 
Oh, it'd be mental. I'll tell you what, it'll put the fear into Secret and Rogue at that point. Oh. If, you, if you've got a heroic roster that you're thinking, right, you know, let's say they occupy one of the relegation spots, so we've just got to fight the other team and beat them. If heroic come out with three points against BDS, tear up the script, it goes out of the window at that point. I don't want to pin it on one team because they are starting to play better, but for Secret, I'd be very nervous because Rogue are having a massive resurgence so far as well since Prano joined. Oh, but we could talk about it. This needs like a whole post show in itself to talk about the possibilities and the stories that we'll be reminiscing on once this stage is complete. But for now, we've burned through 100 seconds and shock horror, no one has died just yet. The round looking identical. Ranchiro holding on pillar. You've got Rafal holding a highway. You've got Shoko playing shock horror, Shoko spot. The shield being naded out once again. And it was around this time when Chaos has found the opening kill onto Shoko and this round really exploded open. It was. I don't know that Shoko will get quite so aggressive this time. I think he's just going to play a little bit more passive, drop himself back under the stairs there and just try again to prevent this push coming in from Heroic. He made the challenge last time Kaoxis was able to win. He <laughs> does it again! Seven seconds faster than last time as well, just to give you an idea. I can't believe he's got away with that. And he was hiding like Harry Potter in the closet under the stairs and still gets found. Now we've got 30 seconds to play. The question is, can Thunder have a repeat? Does Lightning strike twice? I know that it's called Thunder, but we'll go with it for the scripts. In comes the push as well. Two kills fall down it's not thunder but it's Voy and it's shukri they found two rounds in a row potentially here rafal has got to do something two kills a big c4 coming out of a lens blast swings for the one it's a one versus three clutch or bust it's not gonna happen it's bust heroic go five and three Heroic absolutely flying at the minute. You can just feel the energy in their play, Des. You can feel that electricity just crackling through the squad as they take the drop, and there's the confidence there. We can win these fights. Chaoxis going head-to-head -head with Shaiko twice and winning both of them to just really light that fire under his team. <laughs> this is unbelievable. This is unprecedented, and this is some enjoyable siege to watch right now. I just oh, We love an underdog story from love the UK. It. But Absolutely this, love it. This is something else. They are at that point, Ace. They've, they've gone past the turning point, right, where you look at 5-3 and think, right, one more round they need in the next four rounds to guarantee at least overtime. And I think if you offer them a point against BDS at the start of the day, they'd have bit your hand off. Absolutely. They'd be like, a point against BDS, one of the best teams in the world? Yeah. We'll take it every day of the week. But here, they're going for the lion's share. They want all three. One more round guarantees at least overtime. And imagine if BDS lose this site. Where do you go next? They've lost supply and laundry twice. They're now up on the top floor. If this crumbles apart, Rattle, they're going to be oh, but so, I think they're already rattled. rattled, I'll be honest. There's right now, they are punch drunk because Heroic are just coming in here and just playing exactly as they please. And there is not much that BDS can do to stop them. They've changed sites. Let's see if that just changes the momentum, the dynamic a little bit because they need something to. I love how in the last couple of rounds they've been like, oh, Renshira, you want to play smoke? This is Bride, by the way. He's like, you want to play smoke? You, you play smoke, buddy. Now we're losing. Give me smoke back. He's back on his main again. We know what he can do. He was a terror. And here comes the early peak coming out. Flaz losing out on this one. Lems challenging hyper aggressive. And that drone just two seconds behind where it needed to be, unfortunately. Ace Flaz maybe a little bit impatient. I think that's exactly what BDS needed. They needed that strong start to come out and just sort of dampen down the fire a little bit that is burning for Heroic right now because they are certainly looking dangerous. They've just had that tempered a little bit. Rafal is down there in kitchen on the Jaeger looking to just make things difficult. He's just going to try and hold on to this spot for as long as possible. If he can take one with him, that would be absolutely phenomenal. They're going to open up the wall for the time being. As you can see, the Jaeger there just hitting the deck for the time being, but Rafal, he's going to come back to it, look to take himself a peek through here. He needs to be careful, might lose his life, and if he does, now is not the time to do it. Des as Kyoxis once again finds the kill onto Shaiko, three in a row. That is him finding the main man inside of each of these rounds. One main stinger is they had six frag grenades on side, but obviously lost two straight away with Blaz going down. Still got four to play behind. No difference to what we saw coming out of BDS. And rather than running onto three hard breaches, they are just opting for the two in their attacking lineup. So very small differences between the team, but it does give more explosive threat, as you've seen already a couple of times in the round. Four versus four as we pass that halfway mark. And where BDS had a massive focus, if you remember, coming through Attic and taking over Kids, it isn't quite the same story for Heroic. They're instead focusing much more heavily in towards dining for their push-in to try and make the, the attack happen here. 
Lems now just got himself inside of security. Interesting to see that BDS have still got two players underneath, two players C4, right? with only one C4 between them. So they need to keep Lems alive, particularly Rafal. I think he's actually just dipped himself away. He was No, no, he's still in the back of Kitchen. And Heroic don't really have an answer to this right now. Shukri has been held inside of dining for the longest time by this. I think he's just trying to prevent him being able to rotate back. I don't know that Heroic are maybe just working elsewhere to try and get themselves into sight, but they can't whilst the Lems is underneath. He's just going to reactivate that laser gate, and without clearing him out, there is no access through that double window. No, it's, it's that stalling out thing that we saw in the last round, right, for Heroic, where they kind of slow down the mid-round. BDS has done it a couple of times as well. Oh, Renshiro, lucky to have his life, and this is where they've got to pick things up. One comes through, immediately traded back into a three versus three, but Rafal from distance finds one, finds two. Didn't know that he was deep inside of Attic, but those two kills can be the round winner. BDS find it and bring us up to five and four. This is getting spicy, and you said to me before the game, oh, this could be one of them that goes to 12. I've just got the feeling it's heading there very quickly, Ace. Just got the feeling sometimes you just get the feeling and heroic they've certainly got a few feelings about this one i'm sure they, they were just unable to deal with the romas there in round nine i think you know they went in there they had a lems they had rafal playing down underneath they never got disrupted there's they never had to move from where they were a lems coming out super early with that aggression they won't get away with that again i don't think bds now Heroic, they're going to be a little bit more careful about that entry. They're going to go in there well prepared for those early fights. But for my money there, Elems comes out, starts it exactly as they needed to go on. And then Heroic, without Blas, were just unable to shift them two from underneath without shifting them. I think they were trying to set up for a double window push. They did have a man on the double window, but they were never able to get inside because they know they've got Elems underneath. And they just never really managed to, to pick that one apart. But they're going to be heading back down in round. 10 to laundry and supply it is a sight and you're not hearing me wrong when i say this if you've just joined us team bds have lost this site twice so far in the defenses they lost it in round seven they lost it in round eight now they're going to try again in round 10. of the 10 rounds we've played so far we've seen supply and laundry six times it's worth mentioning both teams with a massive preference towards playing this site even after losing it a couple of times. For BDS, though, there is a change in tack. I'll always say they're one of the teams that are the least likely to roam. I think of them on Clubhouse, and very rarely do you see them roam, but they've always got, I think, little telltale, telltale signs that you will see them on the roam. Alone's picking Valkyrie on Clubhouse, telltale, telltale sign. On a map like this, Vigil coming out for Alem's, telltale sign. You're going to see a player or two getting off site, and they have the ability for both Rafal, well, Rafal, Alems, and Shaiko to be off site, but Heroic are just a little bit too prepared. Alems losing his life very early on. Great start for Heroic. As you say, BDS just coming out and trying, saying, look, what we tried the first two times hasn't worked. We need to get out in the map and we need to waste even more of their time because the final executions were coming in from Heroic in the last 30 seconds or so. So, yep, right, OK, let's get a few players out in the map. Let's waste some time. Let's give them even less to work with once they get to that final point. The problem comes when you don't manage to... In implement that Rome game successfully. And as we can see, Ranchiro already getting forced back down towards site. He's going to be heading back down to his position at Pillars. They've lost that opening battle, so that's a Lem's gone. Five versus four, Heroic. They're going to waste a little bit more time just making sure the map is clear. So that is one job that has been done by the Romers. It's going to take them a little bit of time just to be confident that they've got control. Once they've got that, plenty of time to execute onto site here. And it could be another tough round for BDS downstairs. One of those where you've seen the reverse of what we saw in the previous round, where it was Heroic losing their front man in Blas very early on. This time round, it's the reverse. It's a Lems who's been taken out. So now you've got to see what BDS can do on the back foot with about 75 seconds still to play. It's a lot easier to hunker down and let Heroic be the ones that have got to make the actions, but they'll be filled with a bit of confidence knowing they're in this five versus four. Just trying to starve out the information game away from Heroic. Still got enough drones left on side to keep themselves comfortable, I think but it's going to be about that execute. We've seen them be slow a couple of times, Ace, and we've got to see that pre that pace step up in these next few rounds. I'm always interested to watch what the the, uh, the dead players are doing as well. You can see on a Lems there, on his player card, it shows what he's observing at that time, and he's just been consistently on Shaiko throughout since death. There's, uh, you know, there may not be any cams available, but they do have a bulletproof camera on the board. You know, there is information tools there, and obviously each team plays sure. their own style, and it may well be that other players are checking in on that, but it's always fascinating 
fascinating to watch. Now, Shako, he's going to level things up. He could be the big man for his team here. They're going to need that sort of performance. Just burning utility for the time being. He knows he that one it. is pushing in. He did read it very well. Renshiro finishes the kill off onto Blas. And that leaves us 15 seconds left to go in Heroic. They need to make a move here. Thunder, he could go big again. We saw him have a 4K on this site in round seven. Can he do the same? He looks to find the man. He steps away just in time. Will get the kill. Nah. Three versus two. Two versus two. Time ticking down. Almost certain for BDS oh. to win this on the timer. And that's exactly what they do to level things up five to five. We're going to 12. <laughs> and so in that final little like 30 seconds, I was like, oh, where's Breeday right now? What's Breeday doing? And then he pops up around the washing machine. It's just like, hey, just here to spoil your days. You come running in from laundry to try and go for the plant in the dying six. Well, like, maybe it was 60 seconds. It was the dying six seconds more like. Great round ender from Breeday and good patience being shown by BDS. The time coming back to bite Heroic as we feared that it might. But they've broken the curse, Ace. They've won the downstairs site. Now they've got to go to an off site. It's going to have to be one of the kitchen sites, of course. Which one it's going to be is my big question. Kitchen and dining. So steering away from meeting. We'll see what the hold looks like here. Do they go for a small tower hold as Heroic did back in the first half? Or have they got something more spicy set up for us? They did have meeting selected originally, I think, and then it switched over. So, again, you just ask those questions. Is there a little bit of indecision or is it mind games trying to just bait Heroic into thinking it's meeting before switching the sights over? You never know. Or it could just be that somebody came in with a quick misclick um, and was, point I'm pretty sure and was pointed in the is correct that, that, direction. That's the player. Be careful, though, because the players, they a bit like sheep, they'll just follow, they go and they click and all of a sudden you're in meeting. It's What's like, going on? You get a few kinds of people, right? You get those that will click no vote and just lock in the operator they want straight away so no one else can take it. You get the ones who do take time to communicate and decide whether, I'm not talking about rank, this is more about ranked rather than pro play, mind you. Those who do want to pick the ideal site and those that will just click anything to get through to insta lock in that yellow Jaeger. Dot. If there's a yellow <laughs> dot there the already, I'll click it. It's fine. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Either way, yes, it is going to be dining and kitchen and that were my stepping out for the first time on this map. So I haven't seen that one come through, through so far. It's been very re reliant on the Aruni, on the Jaeger, steering away from the Wamai, but at least for this site, it is part of BDS's lineup. Thunder on the Twitch show and just getting in there looking to clear out any utility. Aware that there is the Echo on the other side, no doubt. So just looking to try and peek out those Yokai drones. There's going to be one on the main stairs for the time being just to try and help the hold of the top floor, which is where Rafal is going to find himself playing for the time being. Now, this is a very important round here. Heroic have the opportunity to get themselves onto map point, but not only that, they've got the opportunity to guarantee themselves over time and guarantee themselves at least one point against BDS, which, as you quite rightly said, coming in, Des, I'm sure that they would have taken were it offered to them. So this one could be the round. Will nerves get the better of them? Will the pressure start to tell? I always love seeing yokais at the minute. The amount of times you'll see this sort of thing, this very aggressive use of the drones to scout out where drones might be parked. You see it a lot of them say, Captain. Oh, he's oh. the wrong way. That's a freebie for Chaoxis. Oh. Clearly not looking the right way. They were so keen to try and get the peek out onto this west side. Biggest freebie of your life. That Never going to say no to that. It's a big mistake coming in from BDS there. That is going to be a problem as they lose the first man. It's going to be the smoke as well. There's three toxic babe canisters going along with him. And it's all going to come down to Bride on the Tachanka to try and prevent that access or to try and deny any planned attempt. He's currently playing back in what looks like security from where I'm standing. He's just moved himself into kitchen through the rotate. Renshiro in a very important position here inside of the showers as well, but the utility is starting to rain in, try and make him uncomfortable. With 60 seconds left. Heroic, I always get nervous about the clock. I'll say it time and time again. It's the one thing I'm always watching out for. But here they know they've got that numbers advantage once again. You saw it in the previous round, starting to work in their favour, only for BDS to swing it back in the dying seconds for beat for Bride, sorry, to bring out. Not quite a clutch, but it was very close to it. Shaiko finds one onto Thunder. That's the twitch off the board. He's having a great game, by the way. At least nine kills he's got on this map so far. That's what you want to see from the man being reintroduced. 
Shukri now knows that there is a man just trying to push from the bottom of White Stairs. It will be Shaiko and he's going to dip himself away. Just try to hold that skinny angle into Showers. Does manage to get shots onto the legs of Voy. Cannot find the kill but looks to get aggressive. But he knows that he's being held here. Has to dip away from the flashbang coming in. Voy's getting the plant down. Des, 15 seconds left to go. He needs to stick this. The challenge is going to come in but I don't think anybody's in a position to stop him. Oh, they knock Kaoxis with an important kill onto Breedy. That's the Tachanka gone. Shaiko down. It's all falling apart. This one's going to be heroic. Does. They're going to take us to a minimum of overtime, Rafal. He's trying to get himself an angle onto Showers. No, shut down by Voy, the planter, manages to get the kill. And that's going to leave us now, Renshiro, one versus three, with about 20 seconds left to do something about this. He needs to find himself an angle onto one. He can only take these one at a time. He's low health, and surely this is a matter of time. Wow. And there it is. He steps into the ADS of Shukri, who is holding that angle, gets the final kill, and BDS, the best you can get from this one is overtime. You remember last week we said, oh, it's a real shame for Oak if they go out now. What we should do on the last game of the stage is cast it like it's the sixth invitational final for their send-off. They're giving us that kind of game here and now against BDS. They're at least guaranteeing overtime. They get one point. I guarantee you there are howls coming out of the like of Secret and Rogue right now because they know what this can do to the standings. I mentioned at the start, don't forget Tempera at the back end of Stage 2 last year with a massive rally to keep themselves in it. That is still in heroic. The fabric of this team is still there. <laughs> it's going to make our predictions vile for the next few weeks, I'll tell you that much. It is. It's going to make it very, very difficult if they start going on this sort of a run because a win against BDS is just massive for Heroic. It really will propel them into the next couple of play days. And to be honest, there's what better time to do it than on Super Week? Oh. So you come out on Monday, you have a massive result against BDS, and you don't have to wait a week. You don't have to let things cool down. No, you're back into it on Thursday, doing exactly the same again. And then you continue into next week. This could be absolutely perfectly time for Heroic. There is a lot that can happen between now and then. But do not be surprised if you see this Heroic team just managing to chain a few results together, put some points on the board, and make things a little bit hairy for everyone else around the bottom end of that table. I'm going to get really excited if they do win this one out. If they can win it in regulation and snatch all three points, absolutely massive. I'm not worried for BDS. They'll be absolutely fine when it comes around to major time, I imagine. The occasional slip up here and there isn't going to cost you a top four spot. That being said, you've got teams like Kavana on a big resurgence at the minute who are really starting to threaten these big teams. It, it just makes for a really exciting end to the year for EUL here in stage three. But let's look at how this focus on the top floor plays out. For the attackers, once again, it's an identical lineup. For the defenders, essentially the same as well. Not a lot is changing for either team so far. Lots of shields being brought along by the Goyo, of course, for BDS. We saw a much heavier reliance on them from Heroic in their defensive half, but for BDS, I think, again, pushing around on time, making Heroic sweat a little bit in the dying seconds of a round has been their forte so far, even but though Heroic have won a few. Not too much of a reason for BDS to change things around too much, to be no. honest. The defence last time around was very good. They don't have the same sort of presence inside of Kitchen this time. Mute Jam are going to be cleared out. That'll allow Void to get his drone in there, and they will find that this time I don't think they're dealing with Rafal in there, although he may just choose to aggress up to that point after he's barricaded off that meeting door but he needs to choose where he's going to play but Heroic need to deal with him because it's something that they were incapable of doing last time we can see Shukri's on the same angle from dining through into meeting now then Rafal and Elems they're just going to fall back into those same two positions Des and Heroic they need to find an answer this time they do have Blaz they do have his nades so that might just help last time Elems was able to aggress onto him and get the kill but Rafal for the time being. He's just going to dip away. He's going to take a couple of damage points from that nade, but not the end of the world. He will live to fight another day. And BDS know this. They know from last time around that this is all about wasting time. This isn't about getting kills. This is just about burning the seconds off the clock for Heroic. Ah, why you that's big. Like that? That's big for I mean, Heroic. That's the third round in a row. Lems has died on the entry relatively early on as well. And I say relatively because we're thinking about these late round executes we've seen time and time again. But he exposed the whole of himself to the freezer door there and it was the freest kill in the world for Kaoxis who makes it happen for a second round in a row. Worth noting, by the way, since round seven, Kaoxis has had four entry kills. Not really as a main entry player, admittedly. He's playing on the Maverick, yet he's still consistently finding these entries. Kaoxis is a player who is a, he's a man of many trades. We know this. 
he's able to just fulfill these different roles we saw it you know more than anything in stage one he's getting in there getting the entry kills down and then a couple of minutes later you see him putting the plant down and he just seems to be all over the place Ooh. now that is big des that is absolutely huge as thunder manages to get the kill onto ranchero can he find another no the deployable shield gonna protect rafael for the time being out comes the flashbang to try and clear those ads but it will burn the nade eight seconds left to go i don't think that heroic get in here des even with the manpower breed here rafael they start to pick up the pieces as the rush comes through heroic they've run out of time no that one is bds's round and heroic just let the sand slip through the hourglass and they lose out we're gonna head to overtime Oh, the beauty of this is the thing right when you leave things so late and we spoke about it for heroic the clock time and time and time again has been the go-to issue but look at the smart play by rafael 10 seconds on the clock pop the glow shield and suddenly there's fire in all of trophy for the next seven or eight seconds and nothing can be done by heroic except stand there and watch it and try and maneuver the way around and rafael is there ready to capitalize off the back of it really smart play heroic punish for being slow once again laundry and supply where we head down to it's bds on the defense we've seen three and three splits across both half it's really hard to call but you look back at round seven and eight where heroic won on this site twice in a row can they do it again is the big question. And Lem's back on the vigil. We saw that get caught on the spawn, well, not really the spawn peak, but the kill on Armory stairs incredibly early on earlier. Yeah, Lem's definitely needs a, a better round here. As you say, he's taken the entry death in the last three rounds. He's been pretty ineffective out on the roam, so they need a little bit more from him. And it's those little marginal gains that they need to find here, BDS, if they want to get this one on the books. Let's not forget, Des, this is a team that we label as the the best in Europe, or one of the best in Europe, top two, certainly. Mm. They haven't yet won any of the stages of EUL this year, and they maintain that title as the top team almost. And you just sort of think there comes a point where if you're not winning any one of the three stages, can you hold on to that title? You know, granted, it's not been another team consistently winning it, so OK. But BDS need to show their ability to come through and they need to be able to top that EUL table in one of the stages. And you feel like they're really fighting for it here in stage three. This it, isn't going to help. It doesn't matter if it's a stage or a major. There's a really good saying for this, I think. Always the stage, never the spotlight. That has always been the curse of BDS that we've said. What do they need to get to the next level? You've arguably got the five best gun skill level players in the world. You've got a fantastic objective focused team, but you can't just quite do the goods. But it's Shaiko onto Shukri being very aggressive, almost gets a second. But Thunder is on another level today. Chaoxis gets another. Two kills in for Heroic and a four versus three. How many times are we going to see Thunder come Hello, in and just plant? rescue the round? Boys getting that plant down, Des. He's going to stick this. Couple of seconds left. Blast finds what? one there's nothing that bds can do about it rafal he's trying to challenge on the rotate takes an awful lot of damage here comes the repeat no just dips back Renshiro. he finds thunder two versus two the bds boys they've got to get these kills if they want oh. any hope rafal he's got to be challenged no boy he doesn't follow it in but it is going to waste crucial seconds if nothing else 15 seconds left to go Renshiro moving back into sight shut down from Ooh. laundry chaos is with yet another important headshot his 12th kill of the day, 1v1. It's all down to this Rafal. He goes on. Surely this is going to be a bait. He's not going to try and stick this as Chaoxis moves in. He does come off. Oh Chaoxis finds the kill. And Heroic once again showing the ability not only to get the kills, Des, but to get the diffuser on the ground. They have looked like a different animal today. Oh, it's, it's madness, because even when you've got BDS trying to go aggressive, Shaiko at freezer stairs, haven't seen that one yet, getting really aggressive onto those running down, and sure, he surprises them to begin with. Heroic have been caught by that a couple of times on the attacking rounds. Think about Blaz back in Shower Corridor, but they just find the way to push their way through. Great trade play coming out of Thunder. Brilliant plant going down, completely unawares to BDS, and they're one round away from getting such a pivotal two points on the board. That's what they came in today looking for. At the very least, as we said, one point, you bite the hand off to say yes to that. Two points, you're absolutely laughing if you're heroic. I mean, like, you know, let's see, we could probably conduct a, a quick poll here, Des. You know, I, I'm going to discount on, I'm going to discount loyal heroic fans from this uh, because uh, that, that wouldn't be fair. Everybody else, hands up if you had heroic to win this match. 
because if anybody's put their hands up, I think they might be tell, <laughs> telling little lies. So uh, this was, it was just so expected to be a BDS result coming into this. We cannot overstate how much of a mountain that Heroic have climbed so far, Des. They've got themselves onto the defence. Let's not forget, when they were defending Laundry, they were successful in two out of three rounds. And look who Voy is playing. The one time they lost, Des, was when Voy stepped away from the clash. He's on there, and this is going to be a tough, tough round for BDS. They need to show us what they're made of right now. Yeah, rounds one and six, both going the way of Heroic when they play this exact setup. So there's going to have to be some adaptation from BDS. Something special really needs to come out of the woodwork right now. They're starting off inside a small tower and pushing their way across. Imagine you'll see them split off and go for a similar take to what we saw earlier on, where it was Shaiko pushing in down towards the south side, the other members focusing on the north. Shaiko moving in very, very quickly there. Inside of 30 seconds, we saw exactly the same from him. And this is the thing, Des. I think BDS have maybe been a little bit predictable. They have just done the same things and repeat. Heroic know that Shaiko are gonna, is going to rush in. He's going to go straight down freezer stairs, and that's where he's going to be established. And yes, BDS are one of those teams that will repeat things and do it so well that you just can't stop them. The problem is for them that Heroic have stopped them, and they are stopping them. And so they maybe just need to mix things up a little bit on the attack here. I don't think it's a necessarily a bad thing to have the same players in the same places. You have a strap that you want to work to, but it's about the small adaptations. And Chaos is here, almost getting tagged out by a nade. was one of those adaptations that I think we might have seen coming out of Heroic. Maybe shook an ADS in there, because this is happening that is time frustrating. and time <laughs> again. What? The, the freezer nade that they keep taking the damage to. Yeah. But not quite dying to. Void doing a good job to waste a lot of time here, but he's got one or two pushing into him. Nade on side. Got to be really careful to try and throw this one deep here. There we go. Nade behind him. Beautiful better, play better, much from better. BDS. And it's a Lems finding the opener. Voy, the one to fall down. That clash is removed. That's exactly what they needed to do. BDS really starting to open this attack up and that is an achievement that they haven't managed in the last couple of attempts when they've been faced with that clash. Shaiko's actually rotating and this is the difference that I was looking for, Des. They're trying to do things differently. Blaz gets aggressive, tries oh. to challenge onto the hatch, somehow gets away with his life, but right now you just feel like heroic. They're against the ropes. BDS are just raining body shots into them. The five versus four, though, and 60 seconds. We've seen how much Heroic can have stalled themselves out in the way for BDS. One or two slow rounds. The first two were quite slow, but they sped things up as the half proceeded. I hope they haven't slowed down as a result of being across on the defense. Everyone is focused on the north side. I don't think you've got Shaiko on the south side. Rafal with a drone down here suggests that someone does want to drop in, but for everyone else, it's all stations on the top side of the map. This is going to be an absolute brawl in the final 35 oh, seconds, but who's going to find that knockout punch? It certainly looks like BDS are going Good for it here as Renshiro. He manages to find the second kill of the round onto Shukri. That's the Jaeger gone, and that is going to find them now. Five versus two as Ilems comes in with a second on the round, and that is going to be Breedy able to get in and get that diffuser down. This looks more like wow. the BDS that we know on attack. Breedy not even having the time to finalise that plan as BDS take us to 15. We never thought we'd get here, but we're loving that we are. <laughs> Which way does it go? Stake your claim now, Ace, because I don't think anyone can call how this one should play out. You can look at the site. You can look at the history of this match so far. It has been back and forth swinging between the two teams from start through to finish. And after losing round 13 down here, they're trying it again. We're going into supply and laundry for what feels like the 20th time in a 12-round map, Ace. There's got to be something special done here. There has to be, or Heroic can take this. I bet there's a lot of people sweating a lot of channel points at the minute, not knowing which way this one is going to go. I'm just interested. Look at that scoreboard as well, Des. Chaoxis and Thunder, 23 kills between Plus the two pre of them. Plus pre-rehost. Plus pre-rehost. There's a couple more there as well. Absolutely unbelievable. In fact, Thunder had the, the 4K in the first round, so there's at least... In fact, all five of them were between them. If I think Chaoxis got the opener on to Shaiko, and then Thunder went in and got the other four. So that's another five kills on top of that. No, 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 so that, that was in round seven. Was that... That was sure? round seven. The 4K yeah. from the Thunder? 4K, was it? It was Thunder getting I'm the getting opener carried in round away. <laughs> 27 kills. 27. Oh, I was one short. There you go. Um, yeah, 27 kills between Thunder and Chaoxis. Absolutely unreal. And special mention before the end of this game even comes into Thunder. What a performance he's had coming back into the lineup today. I think it takes a lot to be 
kind of the blow to yourself to say, right, okay, you're, you're going to be parked on the side for a bit here. We're playing with Shukri, and instead he's bringing a stand-in in to help us out, essentially. And to then be reintroduced, you'd be so nervous of, oh, God, what if I have another bad game? What if things don't go well? I'm letting the team down, the pressure's piling up, but it has been a great game from, I'd wager, pretty much all of Heroic as well. Ignore the scoreline and Boy. He's been playing a shield for a good few rounds. He's been playing support. He's been getting the plant down. He's been doing what a support should do. But for the rest, standout game again against one of the best in Europe. We've got this two minute 30 to play with. Alem's being a lot more passive in his roam this time off. Backing away, not looking to go aggressive down armory stairs. Just wasting time. Having Heroic chasing ghosts, it feels like. Anybody carrying that diffuser does kills are completely irrelevant. Um, I would, of course, say that. Of course, you would. <laughs> Coming into the final two minutes of what has been an unbelievable 15 rounds between BDS and Heroic then. And it is absolutely anybody's guess which way this goes. I feel like the clearance last time around from Heroic was a little bit more clinical maybe than it has been this time. But they have managed to get everybody from BDS back onto site. There's a little bit of utility up there on the top floor. They've managed to get everybody established back in their right places. And they can start thinking about getting onto site. Time has been a factor for Heroic does, but it's certainly not looking like too much of a problem here. They've got 1 minute 30, everybody back on site, it's time to start building now, find an opening kill and look to push on for that final execute. I don't think you'd be too worried here, no. You've lost about 60 seconds to Alem's running around like a madman up on the top floor, but has got himself safely back down to site, so kudos for him. But Heroic now no needs to know, now know what needs to be done. The two hatches being opened up, we've seen the effect they've had in this game already so far. Rafal being the one that I hark back to on that south laundry hatch with a big push in that really did good damage for them. It is, of course, Heroic on the attack. They've got these laser gates still to burn through, so something still to worry about. But in that final 60 second, was that intended? I think you might have thought it was a frag ace. <laughs> Either way, it's there. He's not going to be pushing down rear stage. <laughs> okay. One way or another, it's there. He's not going to be pushing down rear stage for a second or two. But I like what I'm seeing from Heroic in that they are pushing this from multiple angles. They're not just going to feed themselves into BDS. Now, Rafal, he takes a lot of damage from that nade there. The flash has followed down as well, but he manages to keep himself locked in the corner. BDS seem intent on just holding their angles so here. Critical. Elem's big, big moment from him. Now then, that wall is going to get opened up, but not to the same degree, Rafal. Oh, that's he useful. Actually, it's actually useful. He can use that as a peek. He could spray around this into Freezer. 20 seconds left to go. And it could be the old enemy for Heroic here. And that is the clock as Rafal and Ranchiro. They just go absolutely wild. There's two apiece. 1v5. Shukri with nine Time. seconds. But this is almost certainly done. Switches to the pistol. Breed is down. But it is too little. Too late from Heroic. And what a battle. What a show. They have just put on for us. But they were unable to get it over the line in those final seconds. And it is going to be BDS that take what I think was a much harder fought win than they ever expected. Uh, than they expected. I think of everyone watching expected us, including Ace. Everyone, I think, in the talent team had Breda, uh, Breda, had BDS down as the winners. And sure enough, they've came out that way, but it was down to one single round. But unfortunately, just could not break BDS apart in that final round. A good performance from Heroic. And I'm wondering now how many other teams look at this and start feeling nervous, not just because they've got one point, but because of how close they came to toppling BDS. Oh, that's the most fun I've had since last Wednesday. What a game that was. Absolute banger to start us off in EUL tonight. Absolute screamer. Love it and would love to see more of it. I'm hoping Heroic can show us more of that on Thursday. But for now, let's get over to the desk. Thank you very much, Desnes. <laughs> We're back on the analysis. What a game to kick off our day. Who would have thunk it?